Well, everybody else seemed to be making it. I thought I'd like a go. There was nothing else, really. If you went to service, you was a prisoner. You'd never let you out much. When I was about 12 when I started to make change for you. I, was on, I had to stand on four bricks. I was tall enough to, the, to reach the block, you know. When I first made chain, well, learned to make it, I was 11. There was nothing else. No babies to marry. I couldn't go out and nothing babies because I couldn't pay you. You would go to make chain. My mother learned us. Mother was... She used to have the people in to work for, for her. She, she got the work up. She got the work up and uh, work for Sykes's and Willett set us up. Big factories, you know. I used to get the bands off the iron and uh, straighten them and cut, cut it and shut links. 1905, that's when I started to work in the make chain. 1905. And uh, I had half a crown a week. From Monday morning, seven o'clock, till seven o'clock at night, till two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, half a crown a week. That's where you had to go around and pull the couple of the chains and put them together and learn to make it in between. I'm not, we weren't long many weeks learning though. Oh, well, I had nothing when I was 11. We, we, we'd got to learn when we used to spoil a lot of iron, burn it or, it, you know, not get it just right. But when we got it all right, we had to make chain, but we'd got to learn to make it. We had to learn to make it. And I, when I got um, married, I, had, I used to make 300 weight a week, a bare sevens, half a crown, 100 weight. The Woodhouses, Woodhouses brothers, they used to employ the women to make chain in the chain factory. But most of the chain was made by heart workers. And they used to go and fetch their, a bundle of iron and the women used to carry it on their shoulders and bring it home. And they used to climb the cradley, cradley hill, and it was a big hill. And there was, there was one woman, I don't know, what was her name? Uh, now then, I just forget. Well, anyhow, she was a, she wasn't a very big one, but raw bone. And she used to get a bundle iron on her back and carry it up crazy like a man. And then when she'd made her iron, they used to have a, a dobbin, a square dobbin with two wheels on. And that's the, uh, they used to take the chain away in, as they called it, and take it and then, when they got there, they sometimes got twisted. <laughs> I've fetched my own many a time. I remember a man stopping me one day with his coat. He says, what brings you doing that? I didn't know him. I says, uh, well, I've got to get my living, haven't I, so honest? He says, uh, well, it isn't a job for you to do. You haven't how to do that. You just got off the tools and the pair of blow bellies. Didn't have the blast thing, not to the women. And uh, we used to get the steel out in the fire. And then we got the tools to shape it. We used to have to shut it on then. Well, there was a piece of steel with a point on. We used to work, shut it on that. They called them big ones. We'd put uh, the iron in the fire. We'd pull this, this one out, put it on there, and cut that about that much off. See, and got the tongues and held it and doubled it over like that, and held it like that. And then we knocked that and that together. Then we'd got to put it in the fire again. And then when it was hot, you got a money that didn't burn off, you got to have it just right, and then you'd bring it onto the anvil. And then we used to knock it together, you know, weld it. We used to weld it. Mm. I used to make what they call country work. That was all the chains that the farmers used on the ploughs and different things in the fields. And when there was horses, of course, they got to have all tackle on them. They used to make with the short chains and the long ones, you know. They used to reach from the harness to the carts and look on. It was heavy work. But I really was pretty good at it, although I could have done without it. It used to, of course, make your hands hard. 
you know. I was always ashamed of my hands. Well, old and tongues and hammers, it disfigured your hands. You used to get burned sometimes, the fleshes, when you was working, and you took no notice. Mind you, you'd put some a blister on you every time. It caused you to have hands that was not nice. This is my umber on, look, you see that nottle? Look at yes. it. My umber on, that is. The, the children said, what's that grand? Look at your hand, it is funny. I says, my umber on. <laughs> I don't know what I mean, you know. Women went blind when they were young, and the faces, oh, most of them, most uh, Emaciated, you know, thin, haggard looking. I've got a Cradley Parish magazine compiled in the year before the strike. And looking through the burial pages, every month there's a big list of chainmaker's children that were only a few weeks old. Month after month it was the same. So the infantile mortality must have been very great in them days. You take a woman, she'd, she'd uh, have a child, then four days after, in the basket, it'd go with a piece of flannel around it, and yeah, she was making chain with the baby by the side under the amble. So what can you expect? I used to go down to my mother's to work, and I used to take one. Twelve months after, I used to take another. I had two in twelve months and five days. And I used to put them on a block where I worked, on a on a wooden thing, they both got to sit in when they was awake. But when they wasn't awake, Mother used to have them in the house. 